grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm Father Steve Sellers, and thank you so much for tuning in today for this brief daily message of hope. And I do pray that during this Thanksgiving weekend that you are uh, able to find hope where you are now, uh, that you are able to connect with the God who loves you and gives himself to you day by day by day. Uh, truly, uh, that is what brings us joy. That is what brings us uh, thankful hearts. And today I want to talk very briefly uh, about uh, something that I've come to learn uh, in my life over the many years. And I relearned it again today as I uh, got ready and did a wedding early this morning uh, uh, as a, uh, a little teaser to this. Uh, uh, weddings, the, the hour or so before a wedding, uh, is usually the most chaotic time um, <laughs> in the life of a church. Uh, weddings always are chaotic, and the bigger the wedding, uh, the bigger the chaos. And uh, what I want to talk about briefly today, and this chaos from this morning is on my mind, although this was a beautiful wedding, and uh, the chaos goes away once the wedding actually starts, and um, and we have to endure the other. And so I'm, that's on my mind today, but I want to say that there's only one thing that stands between us and chaos. Only one thing at any given, given moment, there is only one thing that stands between us and chaos. What do you think it is? What's, what keeps you from falling into the abyss of chaos and confusion and despair and anguish and wailing and gnashing of teeth? What keeps you from falling into that pit? There's only one thing. You know, we sort of uh, hover over that pit of despair a lot of times. And uh, indeed, we're living in a time right now in this never-ending year of 2020. 2020, We're living in a year uh, that is encouraging us to fall into the abyss of chaos. Um, our politicians certainly are. Our health professionals uh, are hovering over that pit themselves. The first-line defenders, uh, we're all just a... Uh, an infection away from dropping into that pit ourselves. But there is something that keeps us and keeps us from falling into the pit of chaos. There's only one thing that stands between us and chaos at any given moment. And I want to tell you what it is, because I have relearned it again this morning. It's a simple word that we've been talking about a lot. And I'm going to keep talking about it because we need this word in our lives. This one thing keeps us from collapsing in a heap in the midst of despair and trouble and sorrow and need and bad uh, things happening. Only one thing is keeping us out of that horrible abyss. And here it is. I want you to remember this, please. <laughs> I'm talking to myself now. Gratitude. The only thing standing between us and gratitude at any given moment is gratitude, a grateful heart. Now, when we turn to the Lord with grateful hearts and start praising Him and giving Him thanks, uh, we, we back off from that chaos. It's as though it's not there anymore because you cannot be grateful and hateful at the same time. It's impossible. And so when you're staring at chaos, and many people are right now, I understand that this holiday season that we're in now that's going to be with us until the end of this year and then into the new year, 2021. I'll believe it when we get there. But uh, uh, we're, going to, we're going to see people having very difficult times keeping their composure. Uh, the stress level in our world right now is incredibly high for people who are not even in, infected with this virus that's going around, uh, people who aren't even touched by it. The stress level is still incredibly high uh, because we're following the lead of the 24-hour news and misery networks that uh, want to keep us in the state of misery and despair. Uh, uh, they want us to be afraid. It's, it, it brings more viewers, uh, and the, the more misery, the more viewership. In my days in the newspaper business, it was... Uh, uh, back in the 1970s and early 1980s, you know, bad news sold papers. You know, I was an investigative reporter. I know about that. I stirred up a lot of things, and it sold a lot of papers. But we know today that uh, 
it is very stressful just to be alive. Uh, with the uh, economy that's bouncing back now, but with threats of more shutdowns and lockdowns and lock-ins and, and quarantines and you know closed and locked businesses and all of that, the stress level is going up. And that's opening wide that abyss in front of us. And the only thing that can keep us out of that is a grateful heart. Gratitude is the only thing that keeps us from falling head over heels into the abyss that uh, is waiting for us, the abyss of chaos. Those are actually opposites. Chaos, uh, we know what that brings. It brings uh, very negative uh, things to us. Despair, trouble, sorrow, anxiety, confusion, perplexities. Um, and we know what gratitude brings, the opposite of those. It brings us a feeling of peace. When we're giving thanks to God for all that he's given us and focusing on the blessings of this life, now that, that brings grateful hearts, and it's gratitude that is the opposite of chaos. And so that just know that that's there waiting for you, and it's our choice. I proved to myself this morning, was I going to enter into the, the chaos of the pre-wedding uh, excitement and confusion, or was I going to give thanks to God? And I chose the latter, and so I didn't go tumbling head over heels and, and losing myself in the midst of the anxiety that's going on. It's not worth it. Gratitude is so much better. And I just want to close today with a, a beautiful psalm that tells us that uh, gratitude, this is Psalm 116. I'm going to pick a few verses from it. it uh, it's a psalm that shows us that gratitude uh, comes from calling on the name of the Lord. You want gratitude? Call on God. He is the one who gives it to us. Ask for a grateful heart. Ask, ask to be rescued from the abyss of chaos and confusion that awaits in whatever field we're in. Uh, but here's what, here's what the Lord says. Uh, Psalm 116, and this is, this is attributed to King David. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. And then verse 12 says, How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. So be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. And I say amen to that. Call on the name of the Lord and experience his goodness. I hope you have a blessed day today. And I will see you, God willing, right here again tomorrow.